something um, what the project is. Um, I wanted to get two uh, questions answered. First of all, if you give us a recap as to how many um, cases the date have come to you and how many you've been able to um, you know, uh, solve. And um, secondly, I know that this is a position, the Complaints Commission, the position is one that government WS is set up and what have you because it's all the need for it. Um, in, in your view, especially with these two reports that were made, had to be laid uh, on the table, how do you see government viewing the Complaints Commission or the post of the Complaints Commission? <laughs> Your first question uh, is difficult for me to, to uh, really answer that directly. You ask how many cases have we had um, and um, I don't know what you would mean by how many we've solved. Uh, there are a lot of cases, little cases in which we have worked on that um, people have been helped to get what it is that they were missing. Um, in our annual reports, you will see we just put a few sample cases. Um, and I don't know if that's what you mean when you say solved. Uh, all we do is we investigate um, the complaint. We report on it. We make recommendations. And in the annual reports, you will see, and you can go on our website and see, an indication that we make of how compliant the government was with the recommendations that we made. Uh, your second question was, what's my view of what the government thinks of the Complaints Commission? Well, uh, I think that the Correct answer to that is you have to ask the government uh, what they think. What I've said, and um, I think it's some one of one of the my staff brought brought to my attention that some news item today has said that um, the complaints commissioner is complaining that the government doesn't respond. I haven't made any secret of my disappointment over the fact that. Uh, um, by and large, in too many instances, the government does not act to write what they have done, to um, give some kind of redress to persons who have been wrongly treated. Um, there has been some, but not enough. In this case, of the ninth annual report and even the, the eighth annual report. For example, it seemed elementary that an official apology should have gone to the person, just a right proper apology. We didn't handle this right. We are sorry for the trouble that it caused. That has not happened in these. In, in some earlier cases, um, you know, that has happened. And um, I do single out the, I did single out the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force who have been fairly forthcoming in accepting, okay, this was not done right and we rewrite an apology to the person concerned. Um, I mentioned um, Andrew Marin, who is the Ombudsman of Ontario earlier and he once said that uh, in official circles in Ontario, he, as the ombudsman, is as popular as a skunk at a garden party. So that gives you an idea as to how he thinks he is viewed in government circles in Ontario. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, there is a, a certain amount of tension because uh, we are investigating things that uh, some people would prefer not to have investigated. Um, and we are writing what we find. Uh, and uh, people, uh, some people are upset over that. It wasn't, they're not accustomed to it happening. This, this office just came about three years ago. Uh, Malik McPherson, the Adelson newspaper. 
Uh, Mr. Jones, are you concerned that given the fact that legislators aren't given the, the sort of response to these reports, that persons are going to become disheartened and not want to complain? I do have a concern, yes. From day one, when people understood that this office, I had no power to enforce my recommendations, uh, there have been persons who have said, well, you're useless, why are you here? Uh, that has not stopped, however, others from coming. And as I said, in cases from getting assistance. Uh, so I believe that uh, people will continue to hope, uh, to hope that by their grievances being listened to and looked into and uh, somebody told that this is what they should do, I think that there will be still be people who will continue to hope that uh, some good will come of it, that they will, you know, get some redress which they were seeking, that that application for a license or whatever will finally be approved, and so on. Uh, so I have not, I have not lost hope at all that that persons that nobody will come to us with uh, their complaints. Mr. Georges, the... The city office has been in business for the last three years. And um, with these two reports, no doubt you're talking about the board governance, where right? you outlined that your disappointment you outline the importance of these people um, getting their problem solved. We're talking about government not addressing the issues. And um, at times, if you heard, and you? That they, <laughs> if you heard that um, they were not addressed. And secondly, how long, uh, and no doubt, at times when this happens, do, does it get to you? Like you feel that your time has been wasted, you're just being used as a figurehead, so to speak? I would not use the word hurt. I mean, I'm, I use the word disappointment. Yes, I do feel disappointed in uh, when there are sometimes very clear cases that uh, something has gone wrong and what has happened to this individual or these individuals, and we can't take complaints from groups. Um, and there's no denial that something has gone wrong, but there's just no response. It, it, it is disappointing, it is frustrating, but uh, in the first place, the persons who do come to us to complain are still, still uh, gratify that at least they have been listened to, and someone has um, investigated and uh, you know said what happened was wrong, and that it should be made right. And so, even though there's disappointment that there hasn't been action as yet, um, some complainants are still feel better that that somehow officially they have been uh, listened to and looked at. Uh, so that's the way I would, I think I would answer you, Zion, that uh, while I'm disappointed and I continue to, to be very upfront about that, um, I think that there's still hope. It makes you feel like you want to leave? No. <laughs> no, it doesn't make me feel as though I just want to throw in the towel and leave, no. I, um, I, 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 I'm on here for a, a brief time, setting up this office and hoping to turn, hand it over to someone before too long uh, to carry on this, this work. Um, I'm a member of the Caribbean Ombudsman Association, this office is, and we're also a member of the International Ombudsman Institute. 
And uh, we do know that the problems that we face are not at all uncommon across the Caribbean. And indeed, I think in my present annual report, uh, which you will see at some point for 2011, I do quote from all the way back in the 1980s a former ombudsman of St. Lucia who complained in the most plaintive terms about the failure of parliament to um, do anything about the special reports, to act on the special reports. It isn't, of course, a great comfort to know that there's a lot of company in the distress, but um, it does put it in perspective that unfortunately, governments do seem to set up offices like these, um, but without much conscious intention of following through on the implications of having the office. You know, I see my colleagues in other, in other islands who are like chairman of integrity commissions, same sorts of complaints. And uh, it is an issue of good governance that I think we have to keep, keep working for. We have, to, we have to keep trying. We have to, to keep saying that this is the right thing that should be done and hoping that, you know, sometimes you get listened to. <clears throat> Going back to the ninth special report, um, a direct question about the complaints. I think the name you gave was um, Cora, something like that. Mm -hmm. Did you find a land dispute um, being the reason why that, um, why that application was held up? And secondly, before you uh, answer that question, um, in relation to the complaints commission, I want to isolate the Virgin Islands. Because you always pride, Virgin Islands always pride itself on being transparent and, and so on. Do you think that um, the, the inability or the lack of action by government and House of Assembly um, basically contributes to the injustice and um, the process of equity in the Virgin Islands? That's a big question. I don't know, quite know the last one. <laughs> I don't know quite know whether I get it or whether I'm competent to answer that. A land dispute, I did not find evidence of a land dispute having anything to do with this, um, at least from the government files and from what I could s determine. Uh, the only issue ever raised is this issue of the development plan, the Seacoast Bay development plan, an approved Seacoast Bay development plan. Ruben Stobie, Virgin Islands News Online. Mr. Commissioner, is there anything that you might suggest needs to be done both here at the Commission and at the level of the House of Assembly that might make the Commission a much more effective body? I am not certain what could be done here at the Commission to make it a more effective body except that we could do more work and probably work of a better quality, who knows, um, if we did have, and we've made that clear, if we did have a uh, legally qualified person on our staff. We are only a staff of three now. It's very difficult to operate at uh, times and unavoidable that two persons are out. And so uh, that in itself brings problems. So I think we're saying we need at least four staff. And secondly, that the additional member of staff should be a lawyer uh, in order to have day-to-day -day just a legally qualified view of um, what we're doing, the matter of complaints in our jurisdiction or not. Um, and the matter of interpreting a lot of law that may be involved in the complaints. Uh, so that, we have said, is an improvement that is needed here at the Commission. At the level of the House of Assembly, I think uh, we have suggested 
we have suggested quite pointedly that the way in which we think that the House of Assembly could effectively deal with the reports is to have a committee that takes these reports, reads these reports, and reports to the House. That is how, in general, a parliament, you know, oversees an executive, that there is a committee that does that. And so one of the House committees should be assigned the responsibility for monitoring the Complaints Commission and uh, making reports to the House which should then be debated uh, about what's coming out of the Complaints Commission or indeed about the Commission itself, whether things need to be done to it. So that, to me, would be the, the way to go uh, as to the House being effective in dealing with special reports. Now, I think we've said that uh, this is nine special, uh, uh, by, by last year, by last year we had laid how many special reports, Manik? Um, from the, in the three years that we were operating, we had already laid, in last year we issued 10 investigation reports. Um, in 2010, we issued 13 investigation reports in 2009-5. And then of the special reports, ah, here we go. Of the special reports, we issued how many by years and we prepared another? Oh yes, in the three year period, we had issued seven special reports out of the 28 reports. In a way, you may say that's not too bad because we had issued 28 investigation reports by the end of 2011 and on seven of those reports, we thought it necessary to send a special report to the House because uh, there had not been any adequate action. Um, but we still think that that's too many. So these two this year are eight and nine. Sorry, I forgot the question. Uh, just a, a follow-up. Um, Mr. Commissioner, since your appointment and you were listing all these reports, have you ever had a chance to sit with the legislators and, and discuss any of them or your concerns? No, I have not been called, and uh, of course, that is one of the things which, if you have a committee of the House, a parliamentary committee, that looks into this, that, would, that could happen. They could call me if they needed more clarification on a report, uh, as well as they could call officials of the government or ministers. Um, we do copy these institutions from more advanced countries, um, richer countries, I suppose, and then we don't, we don't put in the support. But that's what happens in the UK. There is a committee in the parliament that will take the report, um, and that would call, if necessary, call people before it. What I have done here is back in 2009, I was able to arrange a session with the members of the House uh, up in the office of the legislature and to take them through the act as to what our functions and our rules and so on were and what part that they played to show them the act, what the act says. Uh, that was in 2009 and I was similarly able to do that in the cabinet. I have to say that uh, with the new house, I have not been asking, and it's still pending, asking for an opportunity to uh, go through with the members of the house, the Complaints Commissioner Act 2003, okay, 
and the part they are to play, that they are expected to play um, in this whole institution. And I do make the point in all of the annual reports that members of the House can refer complaints. If constituents of theirs come to them with certain complaints, uh, they can refer it to the commissioner, and I would have to investigate it if they think that there's been maladministration. Um, in these three years, no one has done it, maybe with good reason, but that's just a fact. In the UK, it is still the case that the ombudsman gets all complaints through a member of the House. Now they are discussing changing that so that members of the public can come direct, as they do here and in most other countries. But they have the peculiarity that the complaints go through a member, and still uh, the ombudsman there gets hundreds of complaints every year that members of parliament uh, send on to her or to him to investigate. Nine special reports were submitted. Up to this year. Up to this year. Up to now. And you didn't see it necessary to call or summon members of the House of Court of Assembly to meeting after nine was submitted. Even though I believe Section 11 of the Act gave you that right. No, I'm sorry. I'm right. I'm not right. I'm wrong. Yes, I'm wrong. You, you're wrong on, on uh, Section 11. Section 11 only gives me the power to summon people. In, when I'm doing an investigation, okay, and I'm looking for evidence in that investigation. So that uh, did, um, that will give me the right to summon them after you will not get in. Okay, okay. and um, in one of the reports you mentioned how the two governments had in the manifestos, the importance of good governance, the importance of fairness, and um, you did mention of the injustice in using your word method of this person. Yeah. Right. So are you saying that then, that um, both governments right, have been not exercising good governance because that both, of that both governments have the importance of good governance in the manifestos and you say yet this was placed in the manifestos in just place of method of to at least one person. Will you agree with me then or would you say that there was a bit of um, not good governance exercise as they stated in the manifestos? Well, you may say it, but I'm not I'm saying it. You. I'm not saying it. <laughs> That's not a that's not a question for an answer that I have. <laughs> Looking back, do you have any regrets not using section eleven of the Act? Because I can't get over this section eleven. And do you need additional power under the constitution? Do you consider the commission powerless? Do you think the commission isn't using the power it has? Then my the answer is no. Uh, no to all. I don't regret not having used Section 11. <laughs> I don't think, again, that there was a situation in which it was essential to use Section 11 to find out enough information as to what happened. And uh, uh, no, I don't think that the Commission is powerless. In the, back, in the background to the annual report number one, I did write that I did point out that the Constitutional Commission in 1994 did recommend that there should be some power in the law to enforce the Commissioner's recommendations. And uh, that was not followed through. But I'm not too sorry about that. I, I think that uh, that is the standard thing. Um, we recommend and we leave it up to government and to the parliament, pressure from the parliament or the public to see that the right thing is done. Um, I think that that's a proper role for our office. Follow up question. Do you, do you want any constitutional change saying if you leave this up to the ministers, they won't do anything? Do you want the constitution to give an additional power? No, I have not thought about it. I have not thought that uh, it's necessary for the Constitution to give me additional power. Um, I think that, you know, um, through the press and members of the public, just enough people just need to say 
to the government authorities that they should do the right thing. It, it, we are not to go and get more constitutional hammers and things again, uh, or more legislative power. Um, the government should act right by the people, by, by, by the persons who come to it for services. And I think that if enough people, <laughs> And that's why I say you gentlemen have a role to play in educating the public and informing the public about um, what their rights. If enough people get concerned about this matter, then I think it, it, uh, it would happen. Do you think government should be pressured? Well, government should always be pressured to do the right thing. Thank you, sir. Um, are there any other reports before you know that um, you are not get any participation from government? and which are likely to end up the same as history reports? If so, what are they? No, uh, no. Um, there are no reports before me now. There are no reports that we've sent in that, that we are contemplating a special report on right now, no. There haven't been any. Um, yes? One final question. I'm just going back to what you said in your opening, um, and I'm not sure. Can you go on and do an investigation on your own without somebody coming to you? And if that's the case, you mentioned that there was sort of a diversion when you were looking at this dead harbor development plan and it was not exactly what you went to look for. Can you follow up on that or it's not something you would want to do? Well, um, I can. I mean, I have the power to investigate a matter of my own volition and my own initiative. We call it an own motion investigation. Uh, and we have only done, we have done one so far that we've completed. And as a matter of fact, we are in the middle of another one or two, which are taking much longer than we had anticipated, because we're doing an investigation, as you know, into the process of applying for certificates of residence and how long it takes. Um, and we also started, and we had to stop, but we have to re continue an investigation into the applications for trade licenses and business licenses and how long those take. Um, uh, we have found it quite a challenge with our very tiny staff and with the uh, usual time off and whatnot to do these kinds of systemic in depth investigations, which is a reason, again, why we need, we need another member of staff in order to make sure we can go into it. As to the Seacout Bay matter, no. Uh, I, I mean, we would only investigate a matter in which we um, are concerned that there may be injustice being meted out to various people. In this case, this was a specific complaint, and that came in, and I think that we've said enough about that matter there. Um, and no, I had never thought that 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 Seacouts Bay, the Seacouts Bay project, is anything that I would want to delve into any further um, at all. I, I don't, um, I don't get that question of any injustice to other people, enough other people, and so on, that I want to delve into that. Okay, uh, that may be for other institutions of government, not not the Complaints Commission, in my view. Before we finish. Um, I had some answers and nobody asked the questions. In this press report to which I referred, the view was given that the, com the commissioner felt the need to inject his own opinion as to the development, which I know that I did. I was looking at the plan, and decided to mislead the public. Um, if you listen to my introduction, you will hear that my initial report, and the special report, um, is, is um, to a large extent the initial investigation report. And the investigation report in which these findings appeared was not meant to get to the public. <laughs> it was just for the government. And I expected that the government would do what they needed to do. I, uh, I apologize to this lady. Um, approve the application as their own committee had recommended. Let her get on with what she's to do and, um, you know, look seriously at paying us some compensation. And that would have been the end of that. This would never get to the public. It gets to the public if it becomes a special report. 
So I couldn't start out with that finding intent, intending to mislead the public because it was not intended to get to the house. Okay, as I said, in my opinion, if I have to go to the house, I failed. So when somebody says it decided to mislead the public, that I don't understand that. And the same way the statement is malicious with more intent to do harm than justice. Um, again, you know, I, I, what I'm saying is I go where the evidence leads, I give my opinion on what I find, and you can take issue with my opinion, we can argue that. Because, you know, different people looking at the same set of facts have different opinions. Which is why you have 5-4 decisions in the Supreme Court. But uh, that is just my honest opinion. Uh, th those are the only other answers I had, I think, that no questions were asked. Thank you very much. Yes? If I may, uh, would you recommend the government go forward, or given the public um, interest in this development plan, and government go forward and investigate this plan? I, uh, I have no, <laughs> I have no interest in that. My interest is that the government should do right by this applicant. Should do right by this applicant, you know. Approve the application or deny the application and say why you've denied it. Give a reason. Okay? And that's what I've always said. Denial with reason is better than uncertainty. And uh, what we have here is uncertainty over a period of now stretching into 12 years. So the government will still come up with something even though the files are closed. Every set of files are closed. No, I did not say. Oh, I said my files. My file. Is, my file is closed because that's the extent to which my law gives me any authority to act on this complaint. On this particular complaint. I can't do anything more. Thank you, Mr. Georges. Mr. Georges has shared quite a bit of information on the process he takes to list special reports on the table in the House of Assembly, and he spoke in details about his most two recent reports, special reports that were laid on the table in the House of Assembly. I'd like to thank you all for coming, and do enjoy the rest of the evening.